Welcome to the music department, everybody. Really lovely to have your company uh, this evening. My name is Kate Murdoch, and I'm the director of music at the college. We're a team of about 18 staff, I think. Uh, we have four academic teaching staff. We also have two support staff, and we're very fortunate to have an exceptionally experienced team of instrumental and um, singing teachers. Um, this evening, I'm joined by another staff member uh, uh, who you're going to meet in just a moment, and very fortunate that two of our Year 13 students have also uh, joined this session. So um, I'm going to hand over to Tim Hallis, who's briefly going to introduce himself to you. Hello, I'm Tim Hallis. I'm the teacher in charge of music technology. Um, I lead the all the production side of things here at the college, and... Um, one of my students uh, is online with us, but is having some technical difficulties. That is Yejun Chun. Um, it's his 18th birthday today, and he is spending his time on his birthday with us. So, Anna, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, um, I'm Anna, and I take biology, chemistry, and music, and I play clarinet. So our plan for the session is in a moment, we're going to take you on a short virtual tour through uh, the music department, as unfortunately we're not able to welcome you on site uh, today. Um, and then we'll talk in outline through the music A-level course, uh, and then Tim will talk in outline through music technology. We're aware we may have some guests who are interested uh, in the musical activities that are available at Hills Road. So we'll give you some information uh, about those um, and then we'll be ready to answer any questions uh, that you might have uh, as well. So uh, we're going to uh, now have a quick tour through the music department. Here we go.
Okay, so a little bit of a whistle-stop tour through uh, the music department hopefully gave you a flavour of uh, the setup here. And as I mentioned, a little bit of information now about the A-level music course. I know that some people um, might be thinking about one or other out of the two subjects we offer. Some may be thinking about both. And we have about 120 students across the two subjects um, at Hills Road. That's across year 13 and year 12. Usually two groups of music students in each year group and usually two groups of music technology as well. So we're really fortunate. There's a very large uh, number of students who want to uh, take one or both as a subject, um, often up to about eight students uh, taking both subjects um, and lots of musicians across the college who may not want to take either as an A-level but still are very keen to take part in activities. And the activities are open to all students uh, regardless of what subjects they're taking. Music A-level, as with music technology, we work with Pearson Edexcel, and both our courses are linear courses with um, the A-level taken at the end of the second year. Tim will say more about specifics on music, but both are coursework heavy uh, subjects. Um, many of our students listening today um, may be taking GCSE music, we recognise that not everybody uh, will be, and that doesn't matter. Um, as long as you have lots of musical experience, the course will be fully accessible to you. And the course feels a very natural extension of uh, GCSE and of the performance, listening, harmony and composition uh, components. So um, Music A-Level, you will imagine, is a great uh, route to studying and Yejun and Anna will say more later about their particular progression plans, uh, whether those might be down an employment route, a university route, a music conservatoire route, um, an apprentice route. In terms of the performance side of A-Level Music, we're keen that students would be a confident grade five or above standard on entry. You don't have to have taken the actual grade five exam. A number of students prefer not to take those sorts of exams. But performance is a big part of A-Level and confident grade five on entry will give you access to um, the full um, possibilities of the course. In terms of uh, composition side of things, um, with previous uh, A-levels that you might have, uh, siblings might have done previous music A-levels, um, there used to be an option between did I wish to perform, did I wish to compose? And in the newer A-level that we're working with, um, both composition and performance are compulsory. There's lots of choice of what sort of style you might like to write in on the composition side. Um, people ask whether Music A-Level is, is a rigorous and academic uh, subject. It most certainly is. Um, there are a number of options within the course. And because we have students who might want to make music a career path, we take quite a traditional route uh, through the course, but we explore options as well so that students can tailor the course to their particular preferences. That would be especially on the performance and composition side. Um, on the written side, there's a huge range of pieces that we have to study all of those. Um, so the three components uh, that make up the course are performance, composition, and appraising, which is the listening and set works um, part of the course. If you're interested in percentages, they're displayed there for you to consider those three chunks. And so uh, people doing GCSE, that's a pretty similar weighting um, slight adjustments within different GCSE boards. So those three main components. Uh, the performance side of things, and I can see some people are already asking in the chat about what do I need to do for performance? Uh, we can explore that uh, more at the Q&A uh, stage, but ultimately um, the only performance that you do that goes off to the exam board is in March of the second year of the course. And useful for you to be aware that by the second year of the course, by the time you're performing in March, I Ideally, you would be looking to perform music of grade seven or above standard. So that's why we're wanting you to think about this confident grade five on entry to help you progress uh, to the second year of the course. And if you're wanting to think about how long do I need to perform for um, an eventual final recital, the requirement is of at least eight minutes duration.
The composing side, the exam board are looking for two compositions of about uh, six minutes duration. One of those can be entirely free and Anna and Yejun later might talk about what sort of composition approach they're taking. So you can really tailor that part of the course to your particular interests, whatever those might be. Um, so one composition, as I said, a free composition, and then the second composition is set to a starting point that the exam board uh, divides. And one of those starting points is quite traditional, Bach chorale harmony, it's called, which is basically four-part harmony. And the other is a rather more contemporary uh, remix uh, task, which tends to work particularly well for students who have more uh, aspirations uh, and particular interests on the uh, popular music side of things. And uh, again, just as with the performance component, uh, composition is a coursework part of the course. The appraising paper, which these two year 13 students are busy uh, attending to, um, uh, they're working in our uh, music technology uh, room and they're studying from their uh, music anthology. There are 18 set pieces, which is a, a large number of pieces to, to deal with all sorts of things from popular music and jazz to fusions, instrumental music, a huge range of uh, pieces in there. Uh, written skills are tested there in two um, essay questions. There's some oral dictation, which is writing down a melody that you've never heard before. Um, and uh, the music anthology that those students are working from in the photograph, hopefully that's, that's clear for you, um, is a publication which we do ask you to um, purchase because you need to make lots of annotations on it. So those are the three big chunks of um, Music A-Level. If you're wanting to know more details about exactly what set pieces would I be looking at, then you may be able to see there that there's everything from uh, an aria from Mozart's Magic Flute through to some Kate Bush songs, some beautiful Debussy piano pieces, uh, some more contemporary John Cage prepared piano uh, works. And uh, Yejun and Anna have been busy on the Rite of Spring, Stravinsky's Rite of Spring uh, at the moment. So an enormous range of different pieces there. Um, and we're fortunate that uh, students find uh, music lessons really interactive, lots uh, to do. Uh, this is a year 13 uh, student talking about the course. And we're delighted that uh, students find uh, an, a, an, an atmosphere of open mindedness that's conducive to really good music making. So although in a lesson situation, you're probably not going to be doing lots of group performance in a lesson situation, the kind of very natural extension to music A level is all the different activities that are taking place. Um, entry requirements, you'll be aware, are available uh, either in our online or actual copy of um, Prospectus. So we're looking for a uh, grade six uh, in uh, GCSE music or uh, equivalent. And um, as mentioned just there, you can see um, the alternative route if you've not taken GCSE music, because sometimes it's difficult to, uh, with your GCSE choices, to fit in uh, all the different practical subjects that you might have liked to have done. So it's absolutely fine to enter the course as um, a grade five instrumentalist or vocalist, ideally with grade five music theory. Um, you don't have to have taken that grade five theory, but that would give you a good idea of a sort of equivalent level of theoretical knowledge that would set you up to thrive on the course. And mentioned just there of communication skills, being prepared to find your way around um, a, a computer with different music software, lots of help available uh, with that. Um, and happy to consider all different styles of music, even though we recognize you may have some particular areas that are your um, specialist interests. Um, and again, for those of us uh, working uh, with uh, percentages, some figures there, which you'll see as you go through the evening and visit different uh, subject areas, um, you'll see um, suggestions on high grade uh, outcomes and also on uh, pass rates for A-level. Uh, student destinations for uh, music, a huge variety of things. So as I mentioned, Anna and Yejun happen both to be looking at uh, music at the next stage as a, a route for them. But there are students who are studying music alongside all sorts of different subjects and then looking at a huge array of different routes. So uh, as with music technology, both our subjects are very highly regarded um, at the next stage in a range of uh, different progression routes. Uh, Tim, it is over to you for uh, music technology, please. Thank you, Kate. 
Um, so these are the questions I always like to ask prospective students when they're thinking about music technology, because we can't get around the fact that music tech involves a lot of work on a computer. Um, I'm sitting in the recording studio right now, so we, we aim to do lots of recording, and one of the components we'll look at in a minute is uh, recording-based. And um, although A-level music does involve some elements of studying popular music, music technology is entirely studying popular music. All of our recording, composition, and uh, analysis come from the popular music uh, canon, and that is kind of what all this course is almost about. Um, as with music, music technology is a linear qualification, and all the coursework and exams take place in the second year of study. Um, so we can't, we can do trial work in year one, but all of the actual coursework itself will take place in year two. Uh, we will do some form of assessments in year one um, to kind of gauge pro progress. There are four components in music technology. Uh, component one is recording. Component two is a technology-based composition, so that will be within our software. And component three is a written paper and listening paper where we listen to popular music tracks and answer questions about their production. Component four is a practical paper. Um, so as you can see, 40% of the course is coursework and 60% of the course is examination. So um, although it's still coursework heavy, the majority of the course is actually examined, although some of that is a practical exam. So component one is the recording. Uh, component where we use the different studios. You'll have seen from the fly-through video, we have two studios here. Um, we're very lucky for that regard. So we have um, Studio One, which is for our Year 12 students, and every student is expected uh, or allocated an hour in there a week um, to do some recording and do some mixing and engineering. And there'll be lots of recording projects through Year One. And then in Year Two, they move up to Studio Two, which is where I'm sitting now. Um, and again, you would have an hour a week in there, but it is also available in other hours if you want to book it when it's not being used by other students. Uh, the recording coursework is um, the exam board set a series of songs every year. They differ every year, and you have to recreate one of those um, in the recording studio using entirely audio. And uh, it's good fun. It's the best bit of the course for a lot of students. Component two is a technology-based composition. This is um, a composition to a brief. The exam board provide three briefs. One is a film, one is a piece of text, and one is just a subject matter. And students are expected to create a piece of music using technology um, up to that brief. And it examines all the elements of synthesis and sampling. And we've got some lovely synthesizers just out of shot here that are available for use, plus all the software synthesizers in the software available. We've got um, Logic since obviously, but we've also got the entire of native instruments uh, complete for people who want to get into the sort of more detailed synth and sampling side of things. And uh, it also involves the use of creative effects. So this is where we get really creative with the technology and really push it to its limits. Component three is where we study the history of popular music and production. So we would listen to a piece of music and rather than commenting on harmony, melody and tonality, that sort of thing, we would be analyzing what microphones they might have used, what effects we can hear and how it might have been recorded and captured and produced. It's a good fun and basically we spend an hour every week listening to pop music and pulling it to bits and thinking about the production. It's uh, it's a it's a fun listening paper. It's unusual for people to consider exams fun, but the two exams in music tech definitely are. And component four is a production exam. So although it's considered an exam and there is some written elements to it, this, the exam actually takes place on computers in the DAW. So the exam board will provide uh, you with some uh, material that you are expected to work on in the exam, and then by the end of the two hours, come out with a finished mix alongside answers to the written questions. So they might ask you about uh, errors that are within the audio, how it might have been captured, how you might process something, and then you would be expected to do those things to the audio that are provided by the exam board. It is, um, again, it's good fun actually being examined in a DAW rather than just on paper. It, it's kind of, uh, it's a bit different, but it's really a really good exam to do. Uh, this is Matt, who's sort of uh, commenting on the uh, the content of the course, and um, I think it's uh, a good thing. 
Here are the entry requirements as with music, grade six for music or an equivalent. So BTEC, something like that. And we do get quite detailed into things like waveforms and uh, reflection, refraction, diffraction, uh, sort of only GCSE level science, but a good GCSE in science will set you up for some of the more technical aspects of the course. And again, we spend a vast majority of our time using computers. And, uh, but all of that, kind of pales into comparison with an interest in production and electronic music. If someone's got an interest in the subject, they will do exceptionally well in music tech. That's the key thing I'm really looking for. If you're interested in it, you will do well. Again, we've got 100% um, pass rate A to E and uh, a good pass rate for A star to B, much higher than the national average. And people, again, move on to lots of relevant courses. A lot of people, we have a very high um, pass on rate to tertiary education in music tech. Um, but again, people move on to all sorts of different things as well. Kate, would you like to take over on extracurricular? Great, thank you, Tim. Um, so I can see lots of things coming through in terms of questions around uh, extracurricular. So perhaps this will help to answer some of those and then we can pick up others um, a little bit later in our session. Um, so as I touched on earlier uh, when we uh, first uh, met, uh, all sorts of different musical activities available across the college to all students and a number of very keen staff who find time to uh, take part in things as well across different uh, departments. Um, and and um, we like to think that there are um, groups available, whatever your level of experience, whatever particular music you might be, um, you, you might particularly enjoy. And amongst our instrumental and singing teachers, a number of those staff play into our ensemble um, music. Um, and we're very fortunate to then benefit from some really specialist uh, expertise. So I happen to be a clarinetist and a pianist, and one of the groups that I direct is the College Wind Orchestra. I also work uh, with the College Choir. Um, my colleague Helen Higgins is a choral specialist, so she works with a smaller auditioned chamber choir. And Helen also directs a jazz choir as well, where it's possible to work more by rote if you're less keen on reading uh, conventional music uh, notation. So three different choirs. Um, in the fly-through video, there was a tiny clip um, in the recycle room, which is where I'm talking to you from, um, of a rehearsal of a Shostakovich piano concerto that we're working on this term with a year 13 um, piano soloist. And a number of students who come here who might be looking to a progression route um, down a conservatoire route who come along as particularly experienced players. Um, we offer two sort of extension uh, schemes for performers. Um, one is the opportunity to audition to play a concerto um, with uh, one of our uh, orchestras. And as I say, this year we're working on uh, Shostakovich's second piano concerto. In previous years, we've done all sorts of concertos, whether they're for French horn or trumpet, or um, we, we'd like, we know that that's a really useful opportunity if you're looking at a, a performance career. But equally, we know there are lots of people who just want some relaxation and switch off and fun uh, doing some different music making. Um, one of the projects we've been doing this term is a mashup of uh, You'll Never Walk Alone, the sort of COVID uh, anthem. Um, and climb every mountain and some very fearless uh, musicians from ac across the department and not just students from our department from a, but from across different subjects uh, brave submitting individual videos and our sound engineers have been busy compiling those and uh, hopefully some video footage which I think Tim has been very busy on so that we can still keep uh, live music making uh, going but hopefully by the time you folk join uh, all our music will be happening uh, live um, and as I mentioned, Symphony Orchestra is another option and some of the repertoire they do is of a concerto nature. Uh, we've got a fantastic local folk musician. If you're a folk fanatic, you might know Stu Hanna, who uh, lives uh, in Cambridgeshire. And Stu comes in once a week to run a folk roots uh, group, which is a really vibrant, uh, wonderfully kind of, um, I always think of them as a gritty ensemble, very diverse and very uh, full of music making at a really high level in the sense that they create their own ideas, expand their own ideas, a really spontaneous group of musicians and very joyful. 
um, to listen to. Uh, great jazz scene here. So uh, Trevor Barlow, a specialist, Cambridge jazz uh, musician, comes in to direct our jazz orchestra. Uh, we're delighted. We've just managed to get that to work with both live students and students uh, online. That's our current COVID version. Uh, but uh, again, hopefully by the time you're here, uh, all live. Um, Tim has just set up a, a new enrichment uh, looking at skills for um, session um, musicians. Um, so another great way of expanding the diversity of our uh, provision. Tim's also uh, running. In fact, Tim, do you want to just talk on, on the ones that you're running? Would probably be even better. Yes, yeah, so session that? skills yeah. is um, largely trying to expand the option to some popular musicians that might find some of the other groups uh, not really suitable for their music making. So session musician, session skills is aimed for sort of guitarists, bass players, keyboard players, anybody who's working in the popular medium that might ever consider um, a career as a session musician or working in pit orchestras or as a touring musician and looking at the skills that um, performers and musicians might need in those areas. Uh, music tech is open to anybody in the college except music technology students and just gives um, access to the facilities for an hour a week to come and make some remixes, do some recording. It's just it's a very relaxed session, the music tech enrichment. Um, DJ Skills is run by one of our support staff, our senior technician, and he, um, well, he teaches how to mix different records. He's constantly working on that. It seems to be very high tech. He's making videos and publishing them all the time on sort of different mixes and how to blend different styles of music. Mm. Great. And there's also, I think it's dropped off the bottom of our list, there's also a radio show option as well. So a really diverse uh, group of, of activities available. And as I said, that's open to you whether you take music or music tech as a subject uh, or not. Um, so uh, lots of concerts are going on. We try and have two major external concerts a year. We're really fortunate uh, in Cambridge and slightly further afield, there are some beautiful concert venues. So the photograph that you can hopefully see is of a concert in Ely Cathedral. Um, a couple of years ago. So that's our college choir, a uh, mixture of students and staff from across the college and some uh, string players, I think mainly uh, from our symphony orchestra there. So uh, wonderful venues for us to, to use. Ely, uh, the West Road Concert Hall, um, King's College Chapel, St John's College Chapel. Our carol service each year is either in uh, Great St Mary's, which if you're not local to Cambridge, that's um, the university church in the centre of Cambridge um, and we alternate uh, a service there uh, with uh, a service in alternating years uh, at uh, St John's Chapel and lots of informal concerts also going on in the recital room, the room as I mentioned that I'm presenting from. Um, we try and make sure that a good number of students have access uh, to music tours which are very bonding experiences and uh, amazing kind of extensions and, and full of opportunities. So again the photo which is a little bit squished is of of, uh, jazz orchestra and folk roots um, in Mechelen in uh, Belgium uh, on a tour. So one year our jazz and folk uh, groups uh, go off on tour and the, the year that follows um, our, we take a chamber orchestra, so a group of instrumentalists and chamber choir on tour. And uh, more recently we've been in Venice, in Budapest, um, and uh, yeah, we, we just choose a lovely destination and uh, work with the tour company to do three concerts. It's a great way of getting an experience of what it's like to uh, be a touring musician uh, when it's possible to tour. So that's trips and tours and things. And it is high time that we uh, tuned in. So Anna is appearing back on screen, which is great. Um, Ye Jun, the birthday boy, presenting on his 18th birthday, I think, he's, has he possibly still got tech difficulties, Tim? Do you know? Um, it says yeah. on his chat here that he's back on. So, I... okay. so Ye Jun, if you're happy to flick your camera on, that would be great. And uh, what we'll do in just a moment is pick up on the questions. There's the birthday boy. Thank you, Ye Jun, for, for rejoining. Um, Anna, are you happy just to tell our guests uh, which enrichment things you're involved with? Yes, um, so last year I was in symphony orchestra and wind orchestra and I'm also in jazz orchestra as well on saxophone. Um, so yeah, I've played lots of variety of different things in those groups. Great. And Yejun, any enrichment things that you've been busy with in year 12 or 13? Uh, I started with folk roots as a I play guitar, by the way. I've started on the folk roots, and then I moved to jazz orchestra, and then I did college choir in between that as well. Mm. 
Great, thank you. So I've noticed that uh, Katie has asked in the chat about orchestras and band opportunities. So Katie, I'm hoping that you feel you've had an answer to uh, that one. Um, and uh, George is asking about uh, Hills offering, uh, what Hills is offering in terms of music facilities and teaching. So George, I'm hoping you saw from the fly through some of the uh, facilities. Um, Yejun, what's your kind of feeling about access to the equipment? I mean, you're, you're a student of both music and music tech. So anything else that you'd say to George in terms of the access to specialist equipment that you need? Oh, as long as you ask the technician really nicely, you can access pretty much anything like mics, recital room for a drum recording, I don't know, you name it. That's it. I mean, I've, I've worked in a huge number of different locations and I would say we are very well equipped Great. in terms of Fantastic. space as much as anything and equipment. Yeah, yeah. And and Anna, how, how have we looked after you when it's not been easy to access things in college? You can answer that freely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I've been able to book um, the recital room for a recording recently. Mm. And, um, we've been able to um, have la uh, like computers at home if we didn't have access to them. Um, so, yeah. It's mm. good. So, Anna, are you happy just to explain to our guests what you were making your recording for? Uh, yes, I was making a recording for my conservatoire audition um, this year because I'm applying to study clarinet performance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Um, so, uh, Shital was asking on uh, class sizes. So, Shital, typically um, around about sort of 15 through to... Tim, have you got a 21 this year for music? Yeah, I've got a 21 in my lower six this year. Mm. So they would typically be that sort of size, as uh, she tells. So tend to be a little bit smaller than some of the, the big subjects here, um, sort of possibly up to 23, 24 uh, students. Um, we usually settle on around about something between 15 to 20 students. And typically, as I mentioned, two groups per subject per year. That's our, our typical um, setup. Uh, so, Mike has mentioned uh, music at uni. I'm looking at, at your question there, wealth of performance. Uh, could I skip music A-level and still get in uh, to uni based on auditions? Um, Yeshun, any thoughts? I mean, you're, you're a fantastic guitarist. Could you, do you think, if you wanted to go down the conservatoire, the uni route, and you hadn't done A-level music, have you captured a sense of whether, if you didn't have A-level, that would be a problem? I mean, the conservatories and unis that I was looking at requires A level as well as the addition stuff, like all the recording of you playing the instrument and etc. And I mean, I don't know about them, but as far as I know, you probably it's probably very easier if you have A level music or music tech. Mm -hmm. Anna, any any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I should. So when I was choosing my A levels, I did kind of think the same thing like oh do I need it um could I do something else and I would definitely say I looked at all the options and most of the uni say you need music you can do grade eight theory to go mm -hmm. to the and not do music a level but I would recommend um definitely taking music a level because <laughs> I thought I wasn't going to do it and now um I'm doing music at uni and yeah, so. Mm -hmm. so Anna, you're looking at, at, you're doing two sets of applications, is that right? Are you happy to explain? Uh, yeah. yeah, so I'm applying for music at university and conservatoire because I haven't decided yet. So mm. it's, it's a really good route to take. So a lot of students at this kind of stage, year 11 kind of stage, are thinking performance is the bit of music that I love. I want to take that to the next stage. Um, but I think uh, looking at if performance is your specialist area, the breadth of the course, and especially Yejun set up with the, the diversity of both subjects, really sets you up to be an expert and experienced in so many different areas of both uh, subjects. And I think really helps. Yejun, do, do you feel that the kind of breadth is, is really there with your, your combination? Is it business as well that you do? Yeah, I do business as my third one. Yeah, yeah. Good. Um, so, Yejun, you're probably really well placed to answer Elijah's question. Can you see that one on the chat, Yejun? I think we've missed it. Oh, see, I am grade eight guitarist with grade five theory. 
with Hills or Beast, do you know? I say still, yeah. I thought when I first walked in, it was like, oh, a bit too much orchestra. But then people in the music tech area is really supportive about playing guitars or like recording stuff. And yeah, I say, I say it may be a bit daunting at first just to see all these orchestras and like amazing pianists and everyone. But once you get to know people and talk to people, you will realize actually it's a pretty good place to be. Great, thank you, Yeju. Um, Sophia asking about whether you can perform on more than one instrument. Absolutely, Sophia, yes, you can. Um, so that's very much possible. If you have two things at a similar level of experience, then that could be a good route to go down. The only little consideration there is whether playing one instrument followed by the other might uh, be a little bit fiddly. So say you were a saxophonist and a clarinetist, which Anna, yeah, I mean, you, you are both of those. Um, would that be tricky, do you think, moving from clarinet to saxophone, um, single recital? Yeah, it's quite, uh, it's, so it's about eight minutes long and that that's not a huge amount of time. So personally, mm. I stick to one, but mm. if, uh, if it's piano and uh, clarinet, maybe that might be mm. a different consideration. Mm. Yes, yeah, agreed. Uh, Tim, I think Alexander's question looks like one for you. Yes, there's one above that as well um, from Sheetel, which I think is probably to me. Um, so in terms of good grade for science, um, to be honest, it's not an entry requirement. It's just sort of um, so a five would be fine. Um, I mean, it is more the physics that's relevant than the biology. But yes, I mean, I it's not an entry requirement. It's just a it's me flagging up that there is some science involved in music tech. Um, Yeshun, do you want to talk about DAWs? Uh, so at college, they have Logic, Logic Pro, and you can use other software like Ableton's. I saw some people using Cubase, but all the lessons are done in Logic. So I found myself who started on Cubase just ended up moving to Logic in the end because everyone was using it. And there's nothing wrong with using multiple doors and being used to them. So. Yeah, I would say that's absolutely correct. I mean, we basically teach, we ha happen to use logic, but we're teaching concepts. So anything that we teach can be transferred to any other piece of software that you happen to use externally because the industry is largely based in Pro Tools, but film is largely based in Cubase. We happen to use logic because it's an all rounder. However, the quest, the follow up bit of question about can you use your own software on laptops? Officially, the answer to that is no, because the exam board require all coursework to remain on site. Therefore, you can't use your own laptops because you would then have to be taking coursework off site. So we can't do that, I'm afraid. Um, but if you were to do the music tech enrichment, I use anything in that. Um, but if you had a particular sound that you wanted to use, for example, you had a synth called um, Serum on your laptop and you wanted to sound from that, you could take that sound and make it on your laptop and then import it into Logic if that was what you needed to do. Mm. Great. Um, Anna, I know harp isn't one of your instruments, but do you, know, do you have anything you could mention to Rosie about harp opportunities at all? Yes, um, there is norm if there's a harp part for the piece we're playing, then there is normally, there would be a harp uh, placement in the orchestra and um, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. We love to have another harpist, uh, Rosie. So we've had, um, there's a, a harp student who's just arrived who isn't a, a musical music tech student, but her tutor happened to have a chat with her and found out she was a harpist. And I think she then did um, a, a recording for our Walk Alone uh, project as well. And hopefully there's, there'll be some other enticing things for her to play. So always very happy to, to find uh, orchestral parts for our harpists. Um, so Ross asking on diploma theory and A level uh, very similar. So uh, yes, there is there's certainly some overlap, uh, Ross. There, so there were a number of students who love the theory side decide to continue with theory exams, and you'll find that there is a crossover, especially on the more sort of traditional harmony side of things. Uh, so uh, Tim or Yejun, do you want to pick up on Benjamin's uh, question? Um, I haven't studied computer science or IT at GCSE. Will that affect studying music tech? No, not at all. Um, the vast majority of students haven't studied. The only requirement is that you're familiar with how to use a computer. And I would say that probably everybody is these days. It's just being able to use a computer. There's no need to understand computer science at all. Great. Yeshin, any thoughts on Vanitha's question? A-levels to take with music tech or the best A-levels to take with music tech? 
Oh, I think I think what it depends what is your main focus. If you're doing music tech, and I mean I mean music, and then you kind of want to do it as music as music tech as a sub thing, then it really combines well. But I'm not sure about like what goes well with the music tech. It really depends how you regard the subject, like what's your further education aim and all that. Maybe computer science would be good. Mm -hmm. And to be sort of three sort of different routes that people might take. They might take the sort of creative path like Ye Shun and combine it with music. Um, but they also, as actually as with Ye Shun, might combine it with business. Music business is a really big thing these days. And obviously there's a science route. We get a huge number of people combining it with maths and physics. Um, and, but yeah, it kind of combines with all sorts of things really well. Mm. Great. I think a question just disappeared, Brett, possibly about um, diploma. Oh, no, sorry. I beg your pardon. It's there. Um, next question. So in terms of uh, diploma and post grade eight uh, opportunities. Um, so, yes, on lots of instruments. Unfortunately, we don't have a specialist percussion teacher anymore at the college, largely through the fact that um, the two recording studios that Tim mentioned both have their own drum kits, have a third kit in the recital room um, but then we didn't have easy uh, an easy setup for percussion lessons to happen here so unfortunately not on the percussion side uh, conducting opportunities yes we're always keen to uh, those who would like to uh, wave their arms in front of an orchestra and a number of students have braved that there's often a stage in the second term where we say what about this what about doing some warm-ups or something of that nature um Yejun, you're, you're for alex question please uh, what is DAW? It's a digital audio workstation and it's basically a software you use to record or maybe play your instrument to program certain sounds. It's basically the, the program we use to make music, in, especially in music tech. Great. And um, Yejin, can you pick up on Callum's question as well about using the facilities for music tech if you don't take music tech? So obviously music tech facilities are made for music tech students so they're going to be the priorities but if you're a music student you can still ask the technician ask the teachers i need to record vocals so can i use the recording studio for a bit that is also possible if you if you have like nothing related to music or music tech maybe it's a little bit more fiddly i'm not mm -hmm. sure what the official process is but um, if you're doing the music tech enrichment you have access to it and on occasions, if you're doing EPQ that's related to music or music tech, we might be able to provide access as well, depending on other, because it's very, very busy down here. Um, but music tech enrichment definitely get access. So, um, and beyond that, it just depends on access as much as anything else. Great. Anna, any thoughts on the question around, um, I've not done theory exams for my instrument. Is that going to hold me back? Any thoughts? Does that mean like grade five theory or? I guess so. Well, any, 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 any yeah, that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Would that, do you think that's the problem? Um, I'm theory, so. Right? Yeah. So I think um, just, just thinking through the idea that. Um, um, I think. Oh, we're getting some slight interference, I think. Okay. So we've uh, then got one on uh, Thomas's question about garage band. Uh, any ideas there, um, Tim or Yejun? Uh, Garage Band is basically a cut down version of Logic, which is the DAW we use. So if you've used Garage Band, Logic is not a big step up from it. Mm -hmm. I think Dominic's question possibly got uh, curtailed. So as a strong performer with an interest in tech, which would you recommend to take? Oh, I see. Sorry. No, I, I, I reread your question, Dominic. A very good question. Um, so, uh, yeah, Tim, uh, uh, do you want to come in on that one at all? Um. I mean, I think kind of either or both. Yes. Yeah. Would be fine. I mean, if you're a strong performer, um, there is very little performance in music tech as part of the course. There are opportunities to perform for other people's recordings. Mm. So there are opportunities to perform, um, but it's not a compulsory element of the course. Mm. Um, but tech is also not a compulsory element of the music course. So mm. it's kind of, it's kind of either or both. It, really 
It's a really interesting question. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, I absolutely agree uh, with, with Tim's answer there. So I, either route. Um, just anxious folk that you've got to get to your next session. So let's just pick up on remaining questions. Um, DJ Skills, it's just sincerely cool. It really, really is. And it sets you up for, for, for being a DJ or just having it as a, a little trick in your bag of tricks that you could bring out uh, when you're at a party. Um, Elijah's question, uh, wasn't looking for music tech. Music Caleb with electric guitar, uh, is music tech the only option I have with an electric guitar? Uh, no, so you could do uh, session skills, um, you could do uh, jazz orchestra. Those would be the two particular things there. Um, beneath this question, uh, Tim, uh, laptop ratio for music tech, if they, oh, the questions jump around. Where's the question gone? Um, you don't need your own equipment. We have enough computers in the department for everybody to have their own uh, computer on site and you don't need equipment at home um it, everything you need is on site and we provide it all yeah and that kind of answers uh, the question underneath as well from Sneedis. Ap apologies so, is that not quite the right pronunciation so no you definitely won't be in a disadvantage if you don't have any equipment at home yeah yeah uh, great. Any Can I ask it, Eli answer Elijah's question? Yeah. Because um, I think that's a, no. Uh, music tech is not the only option. Music is a perfectly valid option as a guitarist. Because um, the Asian is a guitarist and does music. Great. John asking if I did A level music, does my do my sight reading skills have to be accurate? Actually, John, for A level purposes, sight reading doesn't come into it. So great skill to build up. It's going to be important for these guys when they do their auditions, but for A level purposes, uh, not needed. Um, Ashwinjan asking on. Um, wondering if there'll be a chance to learn classical composition notation for orchestras. Um, absolutely, um, Ash Winjin, if you were looking at um, wanting to do an orchestral piece as one of your compositions, you could have support around that. Um, I'll answer Adams. Okay. Uh, depends on COVID. Currently with COVID, yes. Um, without COVID, not specifically. There aren't limits on numbers of students in the recording studio. It's just a physical space. Mm. Stuart, that's a really good question. I think out of all of the different parts of the course, um, students find on composition, um, some, sometimes they feel that they need more answers. Um, and I think it's very much a guided process. It's a bit like the extended project that our students take as well. So we are very keen that you come up with the approach that you would like to take, that you evolve your own compositional voice. But there are weekly sessions uh, suggesting routes to take. And we're very, very keen that you use the extensive um, set works part of the A-level music course to inform your decisions and we will then help guide you through the composing process. So it's a bit like kind of creating a piece of art. Uh, we're looking to you to come up with initial ideas and then we work very much in a one-to-one -one way to guide you through that process. Uh, so piano and acoustic guitar struggle with creating a piece of music. Absolutely, yeah. So um, yes, I know. I think I, I know just what you're, you're you're getting at there. Anna, any thoughts on the composition process and how it works out from a student perspective? Um, I think you can just do whatever you want, really, and tailor it to your own strengths. So at GCSE, I didn't particularly think it was a strong point, but at A level, I've managed to um tailor it to something that i wanted to do and yeah you're supported along the way with techniques and software and how to use it mm -hmm. yeshin any anything to add on on a music composition side of things have you got enough help for, for uh you know for, for the process and through the process yeah 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 i especially in year 12 when i had lesson with barry who's a music tech slash music teacher he, he like really understood what I wanted to do in my music composition so yeah when we had a chat about like i want to do this and then he maybe suggested cool ways to do it on a daw mm. maybe cool ways to record it mm. yeah, there was enough support for me yes mm. 
Great. Thank you very much, everybody, for your questions. I hope we've provided um, answers uh, to them. Um, and uh, enormous thanks to Anna, who's joined us on the call, and especially to Yejun on his 18th birthday for being in on the session. Um, thank you very much to Tim, uh, to Brett, who was hosting, and really lovely to have your company. We very much look forward to meeting you in person and showing you around our department, which we're incredibly proud of. So may that time come very soon. And I hope you have a really good rest of open evening. Thank you very much indeed.